Shalom, covering. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. It is getting very nasty over inside of Syria, and the tensions between the United States and Russia are getting to a point of crossing the red line. Something, uh, excuse me, Foreign, uh, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, Russian Foreign Minister, that is Sergei Lavrov, uh, stated today, according to Russian media. Uh, that there is a red line that Russia will not permit the U.S. to cross without it being engaged directly with Russia. That is definitely not good news. You're looking here at uh, uh, one website, topwar.ru, as well as ria.ru, both of these websites, speaking about the latest actions that have just taken place inside of Syria. This happened on Tuesday. Uh, news of this breaking uh, late last night, uh, this morning, I'm catching this information now. And what it is, is uh, the United States coalition, they struck a once again Syrian uh, militia, this time the Iranian militia, which has brought some very serious accusations by Iran against the U.S., stating that they will uh, respond to such aggression against their country there. That's actually uh, in another article I'll share with you in just a moment here, but let me take first show share with you some of the footage of this actually happening here. You'll see this is their forces. They're kind of scattered. I think they've already been struck once now. They're fixing to get hit two more times. Yep, two more times right there. Two more vehicles taken out. Tanks, uh, there were, they, they had a tank in there. According to the uh, Iranian militia that was operating inside this area there, they claimed that they were working on trying to stop the ISIS members from destroying the bridges that were going between uh, Iraq uh, and, and that of Syria. Uh, they're trying to stop that. Now, I've seen other evidence uh, that, that, that the U.S. has wanted to uh, be able to prevent Syria from having a connection to Baghdad. So uh, may not necessarily be the uh, ISIS is trying to destroy the bridges unless the U.S. is using ISIS to destroy the bridges for them because that is one article that we had stumbled across already that spoke about that exactly. Now the U.S. actually put this response out as uh, their reasoning for taking out the Iranian militia that is there. Uh, and this is stated here, coalition statement on the actions near Atant, Syria, Southwest Asia. The coalition destroyed additional pro-Syrian regime forces that advanced inside the well-established deconflict zone in southern Syria June the 6th. Despite previous warnings, pro-regime forces entered the agreed-upon deconflict zone with a tank, artillery, anti-aircraft uh, weapons, and armed technical uh, vehicles and more than 60 soldiers posing a threat to coalition and partner forces based at the Atant garrison. The coalition issued several warnings via the deconflict de line prior to destroying the two artillery pieces and an anti-aircraft weapon and damaging a tank. Uh, now they go on to state in here as well that the U.S. has been operating in this area now for months. And that's kind of interesting because we've been reporting it here on Israeli News Live for a couple of months ourselves already that the U.S. has actually entered into southern Syria. So this is like one of the first admissions that we're seeing uh, from the U.S. about being there now for months inside that area. Now, the problem is, though, is that uh, uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov disagrees with the United States' assessment here. Uh, about having those conflict zones inside of Syria, as they stated in there, that they were pre-established. Lavrov, deep conflict zones in Syria announced without Damascus consent illegitimate. Uh, and this is something that I found interesting in here. He says, Russia considers the U.S.-led coalition airstrike against pro-Damascus fighters in Syria an act of aggression and rejects the justification for the attack issued by the Pentagon. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov stated that uh, the Tuesday airstrike near the town of Atant in eastern Syria was an, a, an aggressive act that violated the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the Syrian Arab Republic and deliberately or not targeted the forces which are most effective in fighting terrorists uh, on the ground, the minister said on Wednesday. The Pentagon justified the attack by saying that the pro-government forces advanced inside the well-established deconflict zone in southern Syria. 
Uh, he said the U.S. claimed that it attacked the pro-Damascus convoy because it posed a threat to partners based in Atant. The Pentagon stated that an area within 55 kilometers from the town was designated a deconflict zone where forces not allied with the U.S. are apparently not allowed to enter. Lavrov rejected the reasoning saying that he is not familiar with the term. And he states this, this is on RT News that is, I don't know anything about such zones. This must be some territorial uh, territory which the coalition unilaterally declared deconflict zones and where it probably believes to have a sole right to take action. We cannot recognize such zones, he says. Lavrov said Russia, Turkey, and Iran have signed a deal which has been endorsed by the UN Security Council to establish a so-called declared uh, excuse me, de-escalation zones in several parts of Syria. Damascus agreed to this approach and, exa and exact borders and mechanisms for observing a truce inside those zones are currently being negotiated. So according to what Lavrov is saying, this is even with the United Nations Security Council, they've already talked about the de-conflict zones and they've already discussed or are in the process of negotiating where those zones are going to be. But in this case here, the U.S. and the coalition that they are working with is just setting up their own deconflict zones there and deciding what should be done even without the United Nations uh, backing up doing so. It goes on to state there, this approach was agreed to by Syria. We consider illegitimate any unilateral declaration of deconflict zones not endorsed by Damascus. We hope the coalition would adhere to the agreement it has reached with us which states that the deconflict zones must be agreed to in detail by all stakeholders, he, sta he said. Now, you know, this is really interesting when you begin to look at this here. I mean, that's, that's very much uh, pretty brass for the United States to be making the assertion to go in and just set up whatever zone they want to. Now, again, I have to tell you, friends, I'm an American, love my country dearly, and my whole family, and nothing but military family to begin with, served in, in the armed forces. And, uh, uh, you know, but I think we're stepping across a line here that we shouldn't be getting involved in either. Uh, I realize Iran is a threat to Israel, but at the same time, Iran is there supporting Syria, trying to not take out ISIS that the U.S. helped create. And... You know, regardless of what we think about Iran, they're invited just like Russia is to try to deal with, um, with the ISIS problem inside of the country, even Hezbollah. And I don't care for Hezbollah either because I know from uh, living in Israel, Hezbollah, always, there's always lobbing rockets over the border there, fighting back and forth between Israel and Hezbollah too. So there are issues there. But now... This, to me, is being done intentionally. I cannot help but stress this. The U.S., the British forces, Norwegians, they have entered into the southern side of Syria intentionally. And I believe that what their intention is, is to take down Damascus, oust Bashar al-Assad, so, so that Russia, Iran, neither the Hezbollah, none of the groups that are helping uh, Syria, will have any say-so in anything inside the country. All you have to do is take out the leader of the country, and then Russia has nothing to stand on any longer. Forget the United Nations at that point there. Now it's, it's for whoever, whoever takes control of the country. So I do believe that the U.S. is making moves, and of course, the Iranians are crossing into an area, even though it's been declared without UN consent, they're crossing into an area and the U.S. is targeting them. That's going to cause Iran to step in and launch a counterattack. There is no doubt about what Iran is going to do. They're going to launch a counterattack and they have already threatened to do exactly that. Let me let me see here. I thought I actually had this up already where they have actually, yes, here it is right here. This article right here uh, in the Russian language, this is where on, on topwar.ru, the uh, allies to Syria, this is Hezbollah and Iran, have threatened that they will retaliate against the United States for not just one, but the second strike on their forces inside of Syria. And so the words are getting heated up. Russia, let me tell you, this article right here, 
uh, on ria.ru. I need to share with you the English language on this one here. The top war was showing how that Iran and, and uh, Hezbollah both are threatening the United States. That, there again, you got to remember General Wesley Clark, what did he say? Seven nations they're going to take down in five years. They're going to finish off with Iran. But don't forget, Lebanon was one of those countries. Hezbollah is from Lebanon. And Israel would love nothing more than to get rid of Hezbollah on their southern border. Well, guess what? You target the United States, Hezbollah and Iran, they've, they've just given, that's all the justification they need right there. And they're going to strike both countries and they're going to try to take both countries down. But I don't think it's going to go down very lightly either. And it's not going to leave Israel in a good position either because even though Hezbollah is fighting inside of Syria right now, Hezbollah is going to turn those rockets they've got down there in southern Lebanon on the Israeli cities there and they're going to begin to target them. And believe me, Iran has certainly sent some rockets over there to help beef up what they've got. So it's not going to be looking too good there. Let's take a look at what this article says here in English. Um, it says here, the RIA Novosti, the operative headquarters of the Syrian allies, which includes the forces of the Lebanese and Hezbollah and Iran, declared their readiness to strike at the positions of the U.S. military if necessary. On Tuesday, an international coalition led by the United States attacked the Syrian pro-government forces at, at Tant, the, south, the uh, south of the country, killing two military men. Washington explains its actions by the fact that the soldiers were uh, and equipment represented a threat to the coalition partner forces. We already know that. Let's move on down a little further into this article here, though. Uh, so what I want you to hear is what Sergey Lavrov had to say. Uh, but anyway, they said the blood, the, the, uh, the Iranians said the blood of the Syrian sons, the Syrian Arab, Arab army and its allies is not cheap. That pretty much sounds like a threat to me. The headquarters called the coalition's actions cowardly aggressive aggression and evidence of U.S. hypocrisy in the fight against terrorism. U.S. struck in Syria on those who fought against terrorists, Lavrov said. And the lack of re uh, reciprocal military action supporters of Damascus explained self-control, but stressed that they would act if the U.S. crossed the red lines. That's, that's, Sergey Lavrov said that. He said here, I'll read it again, the lack of reciprocal military action supporters of Damas Damascus, he explained self-control, but stress that they would act if the U.S. crossed the red lines. Now, I wonder what Russia considers to be a red line inside of Syria. He goes on to say, the head of, this, uh, the, of the department, Sergei Lavrov, noted that the object of the attack were detachments that tried to prevent terrorists from blowing up bridges between Syria and Iraq. So supposedly this is what they're down there for. And like I stated already, and we shared that already on here, I believe here on Israeli News Live, that the U.S. was talking about cutting that highway going to Damascus. I did that the other day because I noticed that the, that the point where they're at is strategic. And you got to keep in mind, what is the U.S. really there for to begin with? What is the British there for? They're there for that secret information. And notice, Altanf is right there. Let me bring that map up for you. I got to show that to you guys. All right. And thank you so many of y'all sending me about these, uh, about maps and stuff. I haven't had a chance really to get into them. I had one uh, person that sent a, an email to my wife about maps and, and how to color them and stuff. So I'm hoping before too long. Uh, to have that up for you guys where you can see that uh, and share that information with you there. Let's take a look here at Syria, though. I want to explain something. You know, I, and I actually had somebody email me this as well, but I was well aware of this already. I've actually spoke about it before. Like, what did the U.S. do when they went to Iraq? They didn't, they didn't go uh, to all the oil wells first. They went to the museums. And to, to do what? To, to get a hold of all the ancient documentation there. Same thing going on inside of Syria right here, okay? So now as we're looking at Syria, uh, right here, this highway here going to Damascus, this is the, this is the highway, uh, or this is the area where the U.S. forces are at right now. All right, they've got a base here, but they've set up a second base as well. Not sure exactly where the second one is, but they're trying to stop. The, the Iranians want to prevent the bridges from being taken out that, that go towards uh, Damascus, uh, which Damascus being, excuse me, not Damascus, but Baghdad, Baghdad being here. So the U.S. is there to cut that area off, but there's a, there's a big prize there. 
And we know this, as we zoom in closer to the road here, now just keep in mind, Altonf is just south of this region. Let me back out so I can find it. Should have already popped up on the map here by name, but it's not wanting to pop up. Um, I'm looking for Palmyra is what it is. Palmyra is right in this region. There it is, there it is. I'm sorry. It's a little bit further north there. But Palmyra, see the U.S. is sitting here. Palmyra is right here. ISIS has taken this place many times. There is a trove of ancient documents buried inside of Syria. And this is what the U.S. and British forces would like to get their hands on. Anyway, guys, I, it's not looking good right now. And as I've told you all along, we see the prophecies getting ready to be fulfilled. Isaiah 17. But it has a lot more to do with just Isaiah 17. We're seeing everywhere, Daniel's prophecies as well. All these things coming up to a head right now. So the U.S. has entered into Syria, I think, with the intention to draw out Hezbollah, to draw out Iran, to get Syria involved. They want to be hit by them. It gives the justification for them to strike back. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not pro-Iranian, not pro-Hezbollah, not pro-Syria, but I am pro-truth. I am very much pro-truth in what happens. And I believe that people have a right to, to believe the way they want to believe. You know, I, I believe that myself personally that Yeshua is the, tr the true Messiah. I believe that Jesus, is, as some people call him, that's who I believe is the Messiah. And I'm not going to waver on that issue, not a single bit. But you know what? We don't have a right to go force our belief on anybody or, or to take their lands. And that's clearly, that is also a prophecy that they would gather their lands into themselves here in this final days here, just gobble them all up. And that's exactly what they're doing. Exactly what they're doing. And they're just spilling blood by the, by the, by the tens of thousands of gallons of blood being poured out on the earth, all in the name of what? Democracy? That's what we call democracy. It's a shame on the American flag that we're doing what we're doing. Um, you know, I mean, if the, if the American people, if the American government had a backed out of this war and financing and, and prevented Saudi Arabia, they say Qatar is the one financing all these uh, jihadists and, and, and uh, terrorists inside of Syria. No, Saudi Arabia was too, and so is the United States government funding these terrorists as well. Al-Nusra, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, all of these groups. What for? You know, if we'd have just cut the funds off and stopped this long ago, Syria would still be a peaceful country today. And he was, he, the president of Syria, Bashar al-Assad, was the first one to declare in the Middle East there, uh, as far as I'm, if I'm not mistaken, was the first one to declare that he believes that Israel has a right to exist. And was trying to get the Lebanese president to do the same before the war broke out in this country. So Israel had a decent partner right there, but that all got cut off. I guess it was greed. Don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm sad to hear all this is happening the way it is, but it's probably going to happen regardless in Damascus. and our, They're all going to end up striking the U.S., and when they do, it's going to be like a storm that comes in through this country. And Russia will probably get in the middle of it as well, no doubt about it. But I think they would like for that to happen too. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Check out our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can read more and catch more information that we share there. Shalom.